So let's start by creating a new project with a blank project template here called application. And we're going to explore the different file types, so we'll call this one file types. Now first off, it's going to create a main page XAML for us, which is a blank file. But because I want to explore and show how the different file types work, we're going to create a new one here first from the blank page template. So we're going to use the blank page template here, and we'll just call it blank page and we'll let it generate the code for us. So now it's going to generate the XAML for the structure with all the declarative XAML inside there with a grid and a user control. And it's also going to generate a code behind. And if we'd like to, we can zoom out a little bit and take a look at the entire page using the design window. And we can see here that we've basically just got one big blank page going on in the middle. Now if we explore the XAML a little bit, let's pop this up. We can see what's inside. First thing you'll notice is the class here, the X class, is going to point to blank page one because that's what we named the file. We also have a corresponding blank page one code behind that we'll take a look at in a moment. We also have the event handlers wired up automatically. So here we have a loaded and an unloaded event handler that's going to be wired up in the matching code behind. And we've got a design width and height that it shows for us. Now there's some styles that it's stuck in here too. So we can see page background brush and page foreground brush and a highlight brush. If you want to know what those colors are, here's a neat little trick you can do. Since those are solid color brushes that can be used in the page itself because they're inside the user control resources section, down in the grid in the layout route, which is where all of our content is going to be, we can come down and click in the background property. And then over in the properties pane, we can now see under brushes, local brush resources. The highlight brush here, the blue one, is matching up with this particular value that we see over here. Now if we go back to the background property again, we can see that the page background brush is the one that's chosen. It's selected here, and it's also matched here, and that matches up with the first color from the solid color brushes. We can also see down here that we've got a grid. Now the grid itself doesn't have anything in it. We can see here it's the bottom layer, it's the layout root, but it does have a visual state manager. And we'll get into these a couple of sections later. This provides us the visual state groups that we can use for the grid. And then here we have orientation states. So smart enough to let us know out of the box that we're going to need to handle when the screen is changed from portrait to maybe landscape or snapped mode versus full or fill. For example, your app may want to look differently whether it's in snap mode versus filled or full screen. You might have some kind of an app that's got a collection and like a grid view laid out in a horizontal fashion, but then when somebody puts it into snap mode and snaps your app, you may want to show more vertically based list using something like a list view. And this is something that you can do pretty easily using these visual state groups. Now let's take a look at the code behind for blank page one. And here we can see right off the bat, we've got our namespaces listed at the top. And here is the Windows UI XAML namespace that we talked about previously. This is the root of all the namespaces for the XAML controls and interactions that you'll have, such as data. So that's included by default, and then we look down a little and we see the partial class. And there's a lot of other code in here, and the biggest thing you can notice is that a lot of the handlers, such as the page loaded and unloaded, are already wired up to handle orientation change. These event handlers are wired up right here, and we can go down and see here's the orientation change. They're calling into a set orientation method and they're all basically toggling between the view states. So what's happening here is the page is listening for orientation changes, and when those happen, the handlers are running through, getting the view state, and based upon the different view state that comes in, whether it's portrait, filled, or snapped, it's going to fire off the visual state that's going to correspond with that. Let's look at another page now. We'll create another file type, and here we've got a couple to choose from. There's collection that we're going to take a look at next. We've also got the others that were used in the different project templates. But first, let's create a collection page. This is basically going to be a collection of items. Now, it's going to use a grid view or a list view that you can use to display the items. So first, let's take a look at the XAML that we have here. And we can see we still have our loaded and unloaded. We've got a lot of resources. And notice we've got those color brushes still. And we've got some doubles and thicknesses. And let's open this a little wider. And we can see all sorts of styles for the layout grid, for the text blocks, and for a lot of other things in here too. In fact, we don't even get down to the content until we get way down at the bottom of the page. And scrolling these on purpose, you can see how much is there. And now for the grid, you can see down on line 411, that's when the actual content starts. So everything above that is actually all the styles. The key to this particular template is it's going to lay out a lot of things for you in a particular way to help create a nice collection view. 
So this collection page has both a grid view and a list view in it. Now, it will look a little odd at first because you're like, well, why would I need two of those collections to be there? And you don't unless you're going to be dealing with the different states. So first thing you might notice is you've got a grid view and then you've got a list view. But look at the visibility of the list view. It's collapsed. What's actually happening here is we're using visual states to change between the grid view and the list view. So the grid view and list view will never both be visible at the same time. It's so depending upon the state that the orientation is in, will one or the other be displayed. So we can also take a look at another file type too. Let's go in and look at the ones that were used by the project template earlier. The first one is the grouped collection page. This is a little bit different than the collection page in the sense that the grouped collection allows you to show a collection, but kind of lets you categorize it. So in the grouped collection, we had those collection headers above everything. Now it's really the same layout here in the document outline. As we can see, we've got the grid, which is going to be our header, and we've got the item list view and the grid view, which is where our content is. So let's go down and take a look at the grid view and the list view. And in fact, let's make this a little bit bigger again. And we scroll up, the first thing you're going to notice is the grid view right here is a much larger grid view. And we can see it's this grid view group style is included. So we've got this grid view group style. And if you flip back to the collection page, our grid view doesn't have that at all. So the biggest difference we're seeing here is the grid view in the collection page is not grouped. But in the grouped collection page, the grid view is grouped. And the grid view's header template is where we define what it's grouped by. And in this particular case, it's going to be bound to something called name.title and it's got event handlers wired into it. So that's the big difference there with the grouped collection page. Now let's also look at the code behind for this guy. Again, we see our namespaces up top, and we're also seeing the pointer released method. So we've got this handler in here for when a pointer is released, and we've got another handler below for when the selection has been changed in a particular item grid view. And we've also got groups that are exposed. We can set or get the group for this group collection view source. And we've also got the orientation changes that we saw earlier in the other templates as well. So let's take a look at the next one, because once you're inside that grid app project template, you're going to get a grouped collection page, which you're also going to get, once you select on a grouped collection, you're also going to get a collection summary. Now this is where you're going to see a single collection with a summary about that collection. So here on the left hand side, we're going to see information about that collection summary. And on the right hand side, we're going to see another list, which is basically what's in that collection. So first, let's go ahead and select the layout route and then let's zoom out a little bit to fit the selection. And then here we can see the grid again is our header, and then there's a scroll viewer that we have. And inside the scroll viewer, we're going to see a category panel, and we'll move this over a little, which has a header title panel. The header title panel is where we're going to have our content for the particular collection. So the collection may have a title, an image, and a description about the collection as a whole, and that's going to be on the left. And then on the right hand side, you're going to see an item grid view and a list view once again. So here again, we have the grid view and the list view on the right hand side, only one of which will be visible. So on the left, we've got the information about the collection. On the right hand side, we'll have the collection itself. And then there was a third template that we used as a file template when you created the grid app. And that one was called the item detail page. So here in the item detail page, this is going to be an example of a page where you've got a collection of items that you're going to scroll through one at a time and the entire page encompasses what that particular item is. So here we have a flip view. We don't have grid views or list views in this one and let's do a fit selection. This is the flip view in the middle of the page and we can see again we've got a grid which is the header above it and we've also got an app bar. So let's scroll out a little bit deeper. Let's go to 33 percent and now we can see that we've got the flip view which is a collection control, but allows you to have one at a time. So there'll be buttons on the left and the right, depending upon where you are in this list, letting the user scroll through it. We also have our first case of looking at an application bar. So we can zoom in a little bit here, and let's go into 200%, and we'll scroll down to see the app bar. On the bottom, we can see a couple different buttons. We have previous and we have next. So we've got a flip view, and we've got these app bar buttons. Let's take a look at the code behind of this guy. 
and see what actually happens when those buttons are clicked on. So in the code behind, we can see this one has a flip state, basically determining can you flip next or previous. And it's also going to check to see if the home button or the back button is clicked. The home button's in the left-hand side of the app bar, and the back button's in the upper left-hand side of the screen. And then down here, we've got the item that you're flipping through. And then when the selection has been changed, we change and check to see can you flip back, can you flip forward, and was the previous button flipped or not. And once again, we also have handlers down here for being state aware for the orientation to change the visual groups if we need to. So coming back here and looking at this particular page, let's zoom back out and we'll go to 33% and we'll scroll up. And we can also see the back button in the upper left. That back button is the one that we saw in the code behind. And that's so basically you can navigate back to another page. What we looked at here was the collection page where you could have a collection of items, which differs from the grouped collection because the grouped collection has a collection, but it allows you to categorize and group them. And the group collection is what's used in the grid app uh, project template. And when you select on one of those, you'll end up getting a collection summary. And then you'll get the detail page. And both the collection summary and the detail page have the back button, so you can get back to where you need to be. So finally, there's one other page you want to take a look at, because there's another project template, which is called the split project template. And we looked at that earlier. So let's create the split page up here. And we'll just do that. The big difference on this template is unlike the other ones before, now we're going to get both a list and details on the same page. So let's open up our document outline and we'll select the layout route. And then we'll use the designer to zoom out and fit the selection so we can see everything. And there's our title panel. And we have an item list view. Notice this one doesn't have a list and a grid view. We just have a list on the left hand side and that list is going to contain our collection. And on the right hand side we have item details, which in this case is just a content control with a stack panel and then a series of text blocks. And we could change this any way you'd like to. So you can see here we've got a series of project templates that are really nice to use and some of those correspond directly with file templates that you can use on an individual basis as well.